गिरिराज गोवर्धन महाराज की श्री अनुकुट महामहोत्सव की गुरुदेव की गौर भक्त वृंद की गौर कृणानंदे Mountain. 
But Krishna, in the form of a small young boy, he lifted an entire huge mountain and held it aloft on his left hand. And not just on his left hand, but on the tiny little finger of his left hand. Standing very beautifully in threefold, bending form, holding his flute, and exhibiting his transcendental beauty to the bridge bodies. Uh, and in this way, Sri Krishna sent a message to Maharaj Indra, who was trying desperately to destroy all of Maharaj Vrindavan and all the bridge bodies. And what message did he send to them? Why Guru Maharaj, Sri Nasi Bhaktivinoda Swami Maharaj, he told, he was saying to Indra, O oh, Indra Dev, to uh, deal with you is simply the business of my little finger. So like this, Sri Krishna proved by this pastime, there is no need to worship anyone else. No other Deva, no Devata, no Devi other than me. And when Sri Krishna, by his causeless mercy, manifested his divine teachings within this material world in the form of Sri Bhagavad Gita to benefit to benefit all the fallen souls of this world. His final command to all Jiva souls is Sarva Dharma Kalityatya Man Ekam Sharanam Praja Aham Tom Sarva Kathyo Moksha Ishyami Ma Shujaha. So this command and this promise of Sri Krishna that you should give up all other worship, all of your other dharmas, don't be dependent on anyone else, only surrender to me, Mam Ekam Sharanam. And therefore, if you do this, Aham Tom Sarva Kathyo Moksha Ishyami, I will fully protect you, there will be no reactions, there will be no pop, anything. And therefore, you don't need to fear or worry about anything. So this was directly exhibited by the eternal associates of Sri Krishna. Because for them, Sri Krishna is their life and soul. They have only Krishna in their hearts. Because why? They are Radhatmika Javas. They're the eternal associates of Krishna who have eternal praying for Him. And therefore they think of nothing else than Sri Krishna. So when Sri Krishna ordered them that you should perform this Govardhan Puja, and you should circumambulate Hiriraj Govardhan, they immediately submitted to that. So then, then Maharaj Indra became very upset. Who is this little uh, cowherd boy, this upstart? And these coward people, they're so insignificant, they think that they can stop my puja. He became very puffed up and angry, and he ordered some Sankara to come and to inundate all of Vrindavan and completely destroy it. So now Maharaj Indra, accompanied on his elephant carrier, he came there, and all the uh, all the uh, demigods and the clouds which gathered, they, they formed huge clouds and showered down tremendous amounts of water like the end of the universe, inundating the universe. They were like pillars. And in this way, all the showers of rain, he was desperately attempting to inundate Vrindavan. But Sri Krishna, he was approached by all the Vrindavasis, Oh Krishna, save us. Because the Vrindavasis only have Sri Krishna. And when they approached him, then Krishna says, Don't worry, Giriraj Govardhan, he will protect us. And then, just like a young child will pick up a mushroom from the ground, Sri Krishna bent down and picked up Giriraj Govardhan. And he told to the rich bhasis, Don't worry, he will not fall from my hand because Giriraj Govardhan, of his own will, he is floating in the air. So please now you should come underneath and make your place. So what did Giriraj Govardhan provide for the rich bhasis? Because he's Govardhan. He is completely increasing everything, providing all the facilities for gold, goba, gobi. And in this way, all the rich bhasis entered underneath Giriraj Govardhan. But what did they find there? Not just some earth. No, no. Giriraj Govardhan had made a beautiful arrangement. He had beautiful sitting places and, and meadows for the cows to graze, very comfortably, waterfalls. 
It was a very paradisical arrangement. And now all the Prince Rasis came underneath. But the main thing of this Govardhan Lila is that in the center, holding up the hill, was Sri Krishna, the, the sinister of their eyes. And now the Prince Rasis, they had the opportunity for non-stop, 24 hours, 7 days, they could simply completely gaze at Sri Krishna's beauty. And this is what they did. They were drinking and drinking the sweetness of Sri Krishna's transcendental limbs. They were describing his heroism and holding up the hill. They were, they were completely entranced by Sri Krishna. And they had so many conversations amongst themselves. Uh, Mother Yashoda was also there. And Mother Yashoda, the only thing that she can think of is how my Lala will be nourished and how he may become too weak by holding up the hill. So from time to time, she would say, Oh Krishna, you are getting thin. And she would come and take different sweets and, and hold and feed Krishna in his mouth. And she would say, Oh Krishna, you are getting too tired. You should let Kodamanga, he can hold up the hill for some time. Then Krishna would say, Oh my God, I am not weak, I am not tired. The Giriraj is holding himself up. It is so much fun for me. So in this way, the rich bosses were able to surround Krishna, and particularly his present gopis. They were young and very young at that time. They had never met with Sri Krishna privately. But now publicly, in this assembly, they were able to surround Sri Krishna very, very close because it was like an emergency situation and no one would think that this was socially out of place. So now the Brajan Gopis were gazing at Krishna's beauty and very secret glances were coming from the eyes of the Gopis, especially Shivati Radhika, glancing at Sri Krishna. And Shivati Radhika's glance was piercing Krishna's heart. So once when she glanced at him, Sri Krishna's arm began to tremble and the whole hill began to shake. And then the, the coward people, they all took their cowarding sticks and were propping up the hill as if to say that we are really helping Krishna to hold up the hill. So so many pastimes took place like this, non-stop, seven days, seven nights. And at the end of this time period, uh, Indra could understand that his whole attempt was a complete failure. And now, very, very uh, depressed, he uh, called his clouds and he went away. And then Sri Krishna, uh, he saw that the rains had stopped, and now he told all the bridge bosses, oh, now everything is okay, you can all exit, and you will be able to go back to your homes very nicely. So in this way, like streams of white milk, all the cows, all the thousands and lakhs of cows came out, all the first buses came out, and then Sri Krishna replaced the hill down in its position, and then when he came, then all the first buses surrounded him, and they began chanting his glories, but Sri Krishna Chakraki! Gold, gold means gold, cows, 
gold, gold nuts, gold bees, and all of the brothers want to love. So in this way, this beautiful pastime of the Alakut festival of Sri Krishna is enacted every year here in Brunch Bhagavad We are extremely fortunate to come here and to engage in this Alakut festival. Sri Krishna, uh, Sri, Sri Gurudev has told us anyone who ever gives any small offering to Giriraj Gorda, especially up in this day, and, and with great devotion that praying to Sri Giriraj Gorda for the ultimate benediction that we can become the servants of the lotus feet of Sri Mati Radhika. And in this way, Sri Giriraj Gorda will shower his mercy upon us. Sri Gorda Kuja Ki!